This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast, and this is a special edition. This uh, special, if I have my calendar right, Christmas Eve edition, right? Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is on a Tuesday, and we are not here in studio. We are traveling in time to join you from several weeks back. You can check out Chilla's wardrobe to figure out when that might have been. (laughs) And uh, but we wanted to do, and I've been wanting to do this for a bit, and and it's actually the perfect time to do this. Uh, We've been talking about home automation and. And how we want to pick, uh, I mean, we, we already pick Chilla's brain about it every week, don't we? And uh, and and this is uh, uh, one I wanted to do because I finally got internet back in my house. And I'm bringing the home devices in. And I'm talking to my house. And I'm looking at plugs and asking in the in the awesome cast group what to do with that. Um, so, you know, hopefully hopefully we haven't done too much that we're going to talk about on the, on the finale show here. But we'll see what happens. But uh, so Chilla, you know... Like I said, we we, we still got to do the tour of your house, or maybe we have by now. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, you know, it's Christmas. Maybe somebody is just jumping into. Hey, I got a Google Home. I got an Amazon Echo. Uh, you know, I want my phone to start doing things. Like, where do you think people need to start off if they're like, you know, just looking at the I want to automate my house and and start getting into this? When and I think that's a very valid point. Is you don't have to get the Home or Echo to kind of start that journey, right? You can like, do it. Hi, I have an Android. Hi, I have an Android. Hi, I have an... Yeah, whatever you have, unless you're still rocking Windows Phone, you might have a problem, but... And and sometimes it's independent, because I uh, somebody was... I think I think, I think Cynthia Klosky was just saying, when we were talking about plugs and stuff, she's got a set, and she doesn't even use any of that. She just has the app that She uses with, the app that comes with it. That comes with it. Um, so back to the original question, where to start. Um... I highly, highly, highly recommend starting with the most simple of items like a plug Mm -hmm. and a lamp. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think that's where you start to to see the benefit. Um, And those plugs and whatnot can range anywhere. I don't, you got a four pack, right? How yeah. Much, they were five bucks. I, a piece I got a four bucks? pack for around 30, just okay, over 30, 30 bucks. bucks, I think on uh, Amazon. Yep. So four mm. pack, 30 bucks. That's, that's a lot of light. That's a lot of lamps around your house. Well, I figured, I figured I, again, I, I, between, um, I'm thinking about putting one here at the office on a lamp, uh, for the, for at night, uh, and, and putting, you know, maybe a couple around the house and also kind of future proofing, Hey, I haven't thought of the things I want to do with this kit, but I'm sure I'm going to do a few things. Um, I think that's the best place to start. You can start anywhere from you know, your four pack for thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's different varieties of these on on Amazon right now. Yeah, the the one the two things that I would there are three things I would look out for. Does it support HomeKit? Because mm-hmm. as we were talking earlier before the show started, um, there are certain encryption requirements that have to be there to get the works with home kit sticker on there. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not just the developer, you know, writing for the Apple stack. It's, it's certain other requirements that have to be present, which makes me personally feel a little more comfortable. If you're purchasing and it only has, it doesn't have that, even if you're never going to use it, it gives me, maybe it's a false sense of security. So even if I'm an Android user, you're saying that there might be a a, a implicit benefit to doing the home game. Can you explain a little bit of that? I know we were talking. So originally, originally to get that works with home kit, you had to have a special chip to handle some of the encryption on device. Um, Apple did because that chip cost money, which then drove up the price of devices that companies didn't want to pass on to the consumer to keep their prices low. Um, they opted for you know, I think you could pass a couple tests as long as the the transmission of data was secured in a certain way. Um, obviously that costs for certificates and whatnot, but 
Um, but as not as much as that chip. Probably. Not as much as that chip. Not to mention if you're building a device in a circuit board and making space for that chip, um, you think of the, the small size of the devices you were looking at. Um, that's probably item number one. Um, item number two is what are the other alternatives other than using your phone or voice to turn that device on or off? Mm -hmm. um, so I have some iHome switches. Um, well, they, I, I'm noticing just on, on this device here, I mean, the one that I purchased, what should be waiting for me at home as of this recording is the uh, Do Home smart mm -hmm. plug. And I notice it has a power button on the side of the plug. There you, and I think that's perfect, right? Okay. Um, now, keep in mind that if you're using a plug behind a dresser, mm -hmm. um, you're probably not going to be able to reach back there to hit that button. Yeah, so there's a little bit of an issue with that. Uh, you still. could have a little bit, but, but still, um, that option to me is nice. Or if your internet goes out, but mm -hmm. you still have power, the ability to turn <laughs> the lights on and off is kind of nice. You need a backup to that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is, and there are certain light bulbs that do it, I know um, Philips has one. Um, we use some of the Lutron-based devices. Um, they have what they call as a Pico remote, which is a very, very tiny um, remote. That Lutron remote can control any Lutron smart device, so you can pair them to their light switches. You can pair them to their plug units. Um so what we have, there's a lamp that's plugged in behind our TV in our living room um, that to even turn the lamp on is ridiculously difficult. So that was one of the, that was the first lamp that I actually put on any kind of remote. Um, we then paired a small Pico remote and it sits on the... Um, the dresser where all of our plates and whatnot, whatnot are in our dining room. So you can walk in, you can say, Hey, mm -hmm, turn on the TV lamp. You can walk over, tap the button. You could climb back behind the TV and hit the button. I mean, there's 52 ways to do it. Right. But the, the fact of the matter is, is not everyone's going to be a hundred percent comfortable, especially if you have guests staying at your house mm -hmm. of talking to your chosen assistant. Um, so I, I would say, that, uh, that's another the, or, or, the remote. Or, or well, the other thing is, and you've mentioned this on the show several times. There's also the matter of the learning curve to my house. Yes, when somebody else visits, which I've heard at least the Echo based devices. There's a way you can write a script mm -hmm. where if some you can actually say, if someone comes into your house and says, "Hey, mm -hmm, how does this house work?" Oh, it will. You obviously have to type it all like in. Like you do an FAQ. But you can do reads. like a verbal frequently asked questions. Huh. Where you can say, if you want to turn on the TV, say, hey, mm -hmm, turn on the TV. Like in the basement, if you want to say, turn on the TV upstairs, you say, hey, mm -hmm, you know, run the power on commands or whatever you have set up as those keywords. Mm -hmm. um, so like the those those pieces, I think, are definitely the first ones. I wouldn't heavily invest in an actual in the wall like replace your plug your power outlet right um the chances of the power outlet going bad are probably slim to none but especially if you're a renter or anything like that you don't want to have to start actually taking the outlets back out of the wall mm -hmm. um or if one breaks you don't want to have to deal with that so i i find those devices now we do have light switches uh, and I want to clarify the ones we're looking at these do home ones like they're ones that you plug into the outlet and, and then you something plug into plugs them. into that yeah so, so they're they're like an in between basically so we have we have one we have two we have two i homes mm -hmm. that are actually bundled with our Christmas decorations okay it's called. One iHome is labeled Christmas Steps. <laughs> so it goes in with the direct... The, it goes the, the, in with the... I got an amazing Black Friday deal at Home Depot mm -hmm. um, on a bunch of them. So one is... <laughs> because renaming things and retitling and juggling that But you don't around, have to go through that process yep. every year when you come back. So if you can get one for five bucks and just throw it in with your Christmas lights, it yeah, makes yeah. sense. Um, so one's called Christmas... 
Christmas Steps Lights, I think is what it's called. And the other one's called Christmas Tree. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're actually built into automation scenes that are called the Christmas Everything On. Oh, and there's, and there's Outdoor Christmas. That's that. There's three of them. And there's Outdoor Christmas. There, there are, and these are used outside, so they're they're good. No, enough. it's inside. Okay. We have a power you bring them into power that okay. runs in. Okay. Um, so there's a Christmas scene on and Christmas scene off. Mm-hmm. Um, every night at dusk, all of those devices, if they're plugged into a wall receptacle, will turn on. Um, every night at eleven forty five p.m., they will turn off. Um, obviously, you can always. If you're still up and you want something back on, you can say, hey, activate the Christmas scene or, hey, turn on the outside Christmas lights um, or turn back, turn on the Christmas tree, turn off the Christmas tree. You can do things individually. There's there. They all show up in HomeKit. They all show up in the iHome app. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing about those third party apps is I have not yet seen where while you can typically set them up without the third party app, there's no way to update the firmware. So if it needs a firmware update for some reason, Mm -hmm. like Lutron went from being able to support like 32 devices on a, they require a hub. Mm -hmm. Lutron went from like supporting 32 devices to like 128. You had to update the firmware on the hub and all the devices. The only way to do that is via the Lutron app. Okay. Um, so it, it kind of like, like how I have my wise cam. I'll say there's an update available. I have to hit that in the app. Yeah. There's no other way to access that. Right. I, I want to roll that back for a second. You mentioned the hub aspect. So, um, so, so I, I know of, you know, for me, I can say, you know, Hey, Hey Google or like, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> if I mumble, uh, it'll be okay. Right. Yep. Um, you know, I'm presuming that sort of acts of like the hub in that case. Is that the, is that the concept here? Well, or? they're going, they're going back to their respective systems mm-hmm. to, to monitor. And some things require hub. Some things don't. I think it has to do with how they connect to Wi-Fi. Do they work if you, with no internet? Mm-hmm. Um, I have a, a Philips Hue bulb that works with a remote switch. And Philips has a hub, but you don't even need, need internet at your house to use this thing. Um, the internet can be down and you can still use certain things as long as you have power, which if you don't have power, your lights aren't going to turn on anyway. But um, <laughs> I think it all depends on what you're doing and what they can support and, and everything and how they work. Or can they give you something above and beyond what the HomeKit or the Google or Echo devices can do? Mm-hmm. Um we have a mismatch, right? Um, I actually have two hubs for two different brands. I have Belkin's hub because the only way Belkin came out before HomeKit came out. Okay. So their answer to the encryption thing was we'll put a hub in your house because we can't. So the chip is in the hub. Everything communicates with the hub. It's yeah. good to go for HomeKit. Yeah. Um, I, oh, and I, I'm sorry. Side note from that. I'm so, I'm seeing no MFI say in these plugs. Is that is that the chip? Is the Apple MFI? Made for iPhone? Oh, that might be it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I'm sorry. Anyways, back to the hubs. So I had to buy it to get. So all of my automation scenes run off of HomeKit in the Home app. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of where I do my WYSIWYG if this then that type type stuff. I didn't even think about if this then that. Yeah. Oh, so you no. can plug most of those into if this then that. Um, there's a number of skills that you can load into mm. uh, the Amazon world. Um, but that's where I kind of write all my recipes and name my scenes. Mm-hmm. Interestingly enough, usually those will then traverse back into the native, like Lutron or whoever the manufacturer is. When you go into their app, it sees any of the name changes. It sees any of that kind of stuff. Um so I, I have the Lutron hub and then I have the one that makes the Belkin older equipment that came out before HomeKit came out work. Um, and then the iHome stuff is all just Wi-Fi based. There is no hub. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think what else I have. So uh, let me let me roll back that again because, you know, again, there may be some new people that are catching us. Um, um, you know, that may not, may not know us and, and, and are catching us because they're figuring out how the, their home automation stuff is going to work on Christmas. 
um, the if this and that I F T T T dot com. You mm-hmm. can go to, or there's an app on your uh, iOS or Android device, and basically this is this can connect into you. You you log in with, you know, we've used it with social media reposting, like that. I mean, it's, it's how my Instagram pictures repost with images to to Twitter or something. So you know, log in with all those, and there's there's something in there. So if you go in there, or even my car, because I have an automatic uh, in my car, uh, a little dongle that. Uh, let's it speak to the internet. I can go in and 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 connect that and see what's going on. Um, so let's see what if I go into like home automation, that's where I'll see stuff like that. Now, the problem I always have with this, and you know, as I kind of grow into you know uh, Apple shortcuts and things, mm-hmm. it always seems like it's a little too much for me, right? To say, okay, what do I want to do? But it really should just kind of start with, I want to make a thing that makes all my living room lights turn on, right? Like you should start with simple stuff you want to accomplish. Is that is, is that seem like the right thing? Yeah, like I we started with turning on the TV lamp. Mm-hmm. Um, we then kind of moved into turn lights on during certain times yeah. or turn on groups of lights at certain times or with certain commands. It seems like the worst thing is to I'm, I'm going to throw everything on and then figure out how to group it and everything. Like you should start. I with would a I would devices. start to. I wouldn't take a shortcut because you can definitely make things easier for you in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So any one of the, anyone that I've ever dealt with, whether it's going into the iHome app, going into the Lutron app, going into Apple's home home app, no matter which one you're ever in, they give you the ability to put rooms in Mm -hmm. and then assign those devices to rooms. I would not ca- create a room called my house mm. and put every plug all over the entire house okay. in as one room. And here's why. Because as you start to add the devices, you're now going to be able to say things like, you, and you're going to tag each one of those outlets with what type of things plugged into it. So you're going to be able to say, this is a light or this is a TV or this is a, whatever um you're now going to be able to say things like turn on all the lights in my basement well if the only option you have is turn on all the lights in my house Mm -hmm. it's going to literally turn Mm -hmm. on every light in your house so i would highly recommend putting a little bit of forethought or don't take a shortcut when it says what room is this in don't just make your entire house one room see i was worried i did that by accident because apparently in google home it's actually by location Mm -hmm. when you go in there so i actually have a separate like i have a house and i have a studio so and i actually i put i was starting to put one together for our vacation the the room we were in for the for vacation because i was hooking some stuff up and trying to get a chromecast to work um but so kind of like this like hey i have the xbox in the living room i have the front yard uh porch uh, uh camera um, this one, th- this thing's, I don't know why this says office. I need to fix it. Cause I think it's still registered to when it used to be here at the office, but that's, you know, this is going to be bathroom. So that's kind of the idea, right? So now as I add, say the living room light, now it's going to be here with the Xbox. Although I'm still not entirely sure what I can do with Google home and, and Xbox, but it's, it's attached for some reason. Um, you can say things like turn on the Xbox. Mm-hmm. I think you can do like launch a game. Okay. You can do mute. So there is a little bit of that. Like there's a, yeah. So I can, I can yell like Xbox mute to a train or Google. Yeah. So, okay. Um, which is definitely helpful if you have the TV running through it mm-hmm. on the older school Xboxes that have the HDMI pass mm. through. Um, the, I would say the next, the mo- out of the most useful things, right? The in-between device that goes in between your wall outlet and a, and a lamp um, if you don't want to jump to things like actual light switches, I'm not a huge fan of the, the actual light bulbs. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like that's be expensive to replace. It's not just the expense to replace them because they're supposed to be rated for like 21 years. Cause they're all led. This, yeah, that, we'll and the other. yeah. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I've already started to replace like LED light led lights in my kitchen, which we're rated for 21 years. So okay. you do the math. Yep. And my lights, and that's based on like an average of six hours a day and we never leave our lights on in there. But um, the reason I'm not 
a huge fan of the light bulbs and certain light bulbs have now started to figure this out is because they're smart. Yeah. If they're, <laughs> if there's a power outage, they don't understand their last state. So if all of your light bulbs in your house are older and your power goes out, the default for that light bulb is on. It has no clue of before the power went out, was I off or was I on? Mm. So if the power goes out while you're away on vacation, Mm -hmm. every light in your house is going to be on for the entire week you're gone. Well, you can still, like, you can, well, but shouldn't you? You have cameras at home. You can check in, see that that happened, and then log in. But do you you check your cameras or do you look for motion? And you're probably not really going to have motion if you're not home. That is Um, true. But I also do notice on my wise cam, whenever, like, the light switch goes on and off, I do get a motion uh, click. But I guess it doesn't work if it happens in the daytime. Yeah. So. Um, I've used it to make sure there's no water in my basement while I was out of town. We have a, we have a wise right. camera. That's right. So um, real quick. So the second thing I would look at is um, if you have any kind of stereo or multiple devices plugged into your TV that require things like switching HDMI or you mm-hmm. run things through a receiver for surround sound where you're turning on cable box the tv it, it can get messy kind of kind of think 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 stack of remotes <laughs> yes um if you have more than one remote and it's not because your remote came from comcast and they set it up to turn on four things and if you accidentally move away move the remote away too fast not everything works and you have to turn everything back off and turn everything back on mm-hmm. i would highly recommend the investment and in your you're probably talking about a hundred dollar investment. Um, we started off with the large Logitech Harmony equipment, um, and that's not HomeKit enabled. But HomeKit really doesn't have any kind of concept for infrared repeaters. Um, I would look at the Harmony equipment, and then I would look at it. It's a $99 device that plugs into your net in your network um, and then literally has the ability to have four little or th- two external IR things and it the, the base units and IR repeater based on itself. Mm-hmm. You set it up based on your make and manufacture of your TV, your receiver, what you have, what's plugged into HDMI one, what's plugged into HDMI two. It knows based on the make and model, does your, TV supports CEC, so when a device powers up, it knows to switch to HDMI, whatever. Mm-hmm. Or does it need to tap? Does it have need to mimic tapping source four times, or can it? Does it? Auto, can you hit a source one and it goes to HDMI one? It knows all of that thing about your make and model. Um, so then you can say things like, "Hey, mm-hmm, I want to play Xbox right now," or. Um, hey, mm -hmm, it's time to watch TV. You can kind of set up whatever those are called. Um, We've found that pretty beneficial. Um, If you're not into that and you're not concerned about privacy, cameras are definitely a big one. And then um, depending on who your favorite camera manufacturer is, Nest, Ring, um, Wise, Wise, Arlo is another big one. Um, I don't know if there's a lot of wise external out out your front door type, actually putting it outside your house um, where it's not always going to be. I don't think they have a specific one, but I know there there's something to. um, They kind of have one that looks like a bird. It's a cage or a birdhouse thing that enclosure. Yeah, yeah, there's an enclosure that you can put them in. They'll help kind of weatherproof it a little bit. But they also have um, wise is actually putting out a lot of different things now like a lot of home animation things now so i'm a i'm a huge fan and hear me out of ring Mm -hmm. um black friday i recently had something stolen off my porch Mm -hmm. Um, oh we didn't get to that we didn't get to that yeah let's Um, let's get into that here we have a a recent i had someone i had a delivery from amazon um it was taken off my porch moments after it was delivered Mm -hmm. um to the point where Carla thought Carla actually yelled over and said, Hey, I think your package is getting delivered. We had already had four or five packages delivered. So I was on and off the porch all day long. 
um, I went out and my, my TV was not being delivered. It was being taken. Um, chased after the guy. He got in his car too quick. Um, got away. Uh, thankfully, after a call to the police and a call to Amazon, um, he the, they were shipping a new device or a new TV. Um, called some neighbors, posted on social media, um, got camera footage from them. You could see the car coming around the street, making the block, following the track, coming back around two minutes later, pulling in. Um, we then posted that to Facebook, posted commentary on Ring's neighborhood app. Mm -hmm. um, and then a number of other people posted either their commentary or video from their doorbells. Um, I have a ring. My neighbor has a nest. He posted his nest content. So I posted, working well together. Yeah, I posted my... I had let my ring lapse, which I immediately apparently, reactivated. Apparently that morning, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, interestingly enough, I don't know how he figured out that he was probably going to be found. Um, within an hour and 20 minutes... We'll cue the video here for after, you guys with After us. all this going on, mm -hmm. um, I get a notification... Oop that um there's motion outside i look at the i look at the app on my phone i'm on my back porch lo and behold it's it's his car i want to know um, how quickly because he's pulling tv out now yeah I, he's setting it on your <laughs> steps you have a little bit of a walkway and he's going back to his car there he goes <laughs> so, so he has looked up the thing seen the video and seen what's happening already yep so um got his plate got it reported to the police um, they're following up. Um, TV did work. Uh, the first thing I did when I pulled it in the house was um, the box was still sealed. Uh, it, it was definitely not opened. Um, I plugged it in, made sure it worked, called back the police, told them that it was it was re-delivered. Um, <laughs> called back Amazon, said, hey, thank you for shipping me a free TV. You can cancel that order. Mm -hmm. um, uh, took care of anything else related. Um, so yeah, we're following up, but if it had not been for my doorbell, my name ring nest, I don't like, again, I don't care what the, the function is. The, it matters, not the brand. Yeah. The function yeah. matters. The brand who, if you trust one more than the other, more power to you. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I would trust, Amazon any more than I would trust Google. <laughs> mm -hmm. or um, vice versa, right? Or vice yeah, versa. Yeah. I, I mean, there's a cool feature on my buddy's Nest camera. I mean, it'll tell him who's coming up to the door because it started to learn facial wreck people. Okay. That, does that make you feel good? <laughs> <laughs> it, makes pretty, it, it makes you feel good if you own it. I mean, yeah. It makes yeah, you, yeah. But, um, so it, it's, it's up to you. I mean, Ring has partnerships with the police. They can mm -hmm. pull video. Um, and, and we had uh, producer Missy was mentioning that you know just because they work with the police doesn't mean that there's not a subpoena and a process involved yeah. either. So, I guess I look at it as if you're if you're hanging a video camera that is potentially constantly on and hooked up to the internet, mm -hmm. and you expect a hundred percent privacy. I think yeah. there's something wrong with that I entire mean, already, statement. You know where you're putting it, and you're putting it on a public street. And it, like we looked at that when I was putting a camera out front when I was having trouble with my neighbors. And was having actually vandalism to my car. I, we were just like, well, how, what are we allowed to do here, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and even when putting a, a camera in the car, when we were driving Lyft and Uber, you know, it was uh, it was like, you know, what is the privacy standard here? What is the law in the state? So, mm -hmm. And uh, generally, the, if there's no expectation of property on a street on your porch, you can put a camera. And I'm there. totally okay with if you want to see my backside as I go out my door every day. Yes. More power to you. If you want chill a butt cam, <laughs> hashtag chill a butt cam, uh, <laughs> you can do that. You want to see me chasing thieves down there. I love that. This is the first <laughs> known criminal we've had on the show. Uh, <laughs> I mean, via video, not you. Uh, so, I, we, you, know, you didn't mention, like, you actually, like, went after it and had your hand on the it, door. When, so, when the, the first time around, yeah. I made it all... By the time I made it to the front door, because... You know, someone says, hey, someone's delivering something to your front door. It's not like you're dead sprint through no, your house. No, you're like, oh, I'm going to say hi to the uh, FedEx okay, guy or Amazon guy in a vest, right? Um, so when I opened the door, 
when I opened my front door, he was already down the second set of steps. Yeah, for those of you yeah. who didn't can't see the video, mm -hmm. there's two, there's four steps, a landing, probably five or six steps, and then mm. the street. Um, he was already down the second set of steps. I hopped the first step set, um, and probably one, and then hopped the last four. But he had already got it into the back. By the time I made the bottom of the landing, he had it in the back door shut. He was in the front of his car. He left his car running. He was, um, he was already on a roll. So I actually had my hand on his back door handle. Um, again, it's probably not the wisest idea. Kids at home, don't try this. <laughs> if he has a gun or... If, yeah. If you stay, if you stay with your hand on that door handle and don't let go, you will end up going along with with the car. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to win against the car. Yeah. Um, unless you're Superman, the Flash, or whatever. Um, the second time around, when you saw the video, the, the primary objective there was not to do anything other than not trip or step on the TV that he laid on the bottom steps, <laughs> but get down to the street fast enough that I could read his license plate. Um, right. So pro tip, don't chase, try to get a plate, try to get a positive ID, um, make model color description of person, um, height, general weight, whatever you can get from a distance. Um, no, it's not necessarily important to, engage let the police do it that's their job yep. i mean this is this is an, an enabler to help those situations rather than anything else and a big shout out to the, the the pittsburgh dispatch um and Dorman police department i think they were there in maybe a minute oof i wouldn't um, well and it was and it was i don't know if they just dispatched just kind of sent out a random whatever. But I would say the the first person was there in, in about a minute. And he actually, there was a second person that showed up hmm. in case anything was needed or it, I don't know. Dormont is a, a mile by a mile, yeah, mile it's borough. It's a one square mile. So just, but, I don't think I'm going to get that kind of response time in the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> but still, uh, that's awesome. Well, thank you for enlightening us uh, on this uh, Christmas Eve special. Uh, about what's going on uh, and what we should be looking out and some a great story. I didn't imagine you'd, you you bring such a story to us and it, going into this. Yep. And I think it's even if it's just a turn of, hey, I turn my, my lights turn on when I'm not home or mm. and the, the back to the light switch that, or the thing in the wall. Um, sometimes it's more interesting to pay an extra two or three bucks and read the fine print um, if there's Something you're looking for. I think it's interesting when I can't remember which the who the manufacturer is. Their dusk to dawn setting, so it's based on sundown and and sun up, right? Mm -hmm. So you can set those. But I, maybe it's the iHome ones. You can actually say, go dusk till X time, varied by fifteen minutes. So I mean. It, I guess if you're really casing a house and you you really are trying to figure out if someone's home and if you it's come not, by yeah. and it, every night exactly at like the sunset mm -hmm. by like the weather the National Weather Service the lights come on and they all go off at the, simultaneously at the same time every night but you see nobody in the house um, some of them I've seen where you know turn on within 15 minutes plus or minus of sunset and turn off plus or minus a half an hour of time X. So it can kind of give some variance to make it really look like people are home. I mean, it's not the home alone where you have fake people <laughs> dancing around based on him. With well, you could do that. Strings. There's a possibility now, yes. right? Well, um, Chilla, thank you so much. If people have a, a, on the Christmas want have any um, questions about their home automation, they can hit, hit you up where? Hit me up at uh, Chilla on the Twitter, John Chilla on the Facebook. Those will be the... Home Automated, those are the, definitely the quickest ways to get a hold of me. Awesome. And, of course, uh, we also have a lot of discussion. I, I drop my questions in there, and I just tag Chilla over on the AwesomeCast Facebook group. And, of course, please go check out everything AwesomeCast.com and all the episodes. And we will be back with um, um, more timely episodes 
on the uh, first Tuesday of the new year in 2020 uh, with a uh, regular episode. So uh, we hope to see you then. Uh, Thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome uh, Christmas. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.